So, let us continue our discussion on symmetry. We will start with some a nice symmetry relation between tetrahedron and cube and then continue our discussion on roto inverse and axis that is what we were doing last time matrix representation of symmetry operations. So, and last class we gave a geometric proof of the fact that 2 bar is equal to m that is a two fold roto inverse and axis is nothing but a mirror plane perpendicular to the axis passing through the inverse and center. So, we will give a proof of that through matrix method. Then there is one homework I had given you was invariance of trace. So, we will look at that problem and use that result to prove a very very important theorem in crystallography which is the backbone you can say of entire crystallography is the crystallographic restriction or a crystal you can call it crystallographic restriction theorem. So, we will give you both the matrix proof and the geometric proof. Tetrahedron and cube are related. So, tetrahedron has 4 vertices or 4 corners has 6 edges and 4 faces. The cube has 8 vertices has 12 edges and 6 faces. but the two means if you draw them independently. So, do not appear to be related, but they have a very interesting relationship. So, what is the relation anyone? How is tetrahedron related to cube? This axis you are saying from a vertex to a centroid of the, centroid of the opposite face. Mm -hmm. So, what axis is that? This also be a three fold axis. Three fold axis, very good. And there are there will be four here also. And in the cube, in the cube, where is the threefold axis? No, opposite diagonals, body diagonals. Yeah. So any body diagonal of the cube is a threefold axis. But we saw last time that in case of cube. The threefold axis is little bit more than threefold. What was that? Threefold roto inverse, but then threefold roto inverse includes threefold. That three bar axis includes or is a super group of three axis, or sometimes we say that the three bar is union of 3 and the inverse and center and that is why the symbol also includes a hole in the threefold triangle whereas tetrahedron has just a threefold. So, the threefold so it also has four threefold that is interesting and cube also has four threefold because four faces are there. So, each face centroid can be connected to the opposite vertex. So, you get 4 3 fold 1 is shown here. So, for example, if you try if you try to draw another one you can take this center and this face center you get another another 3 fold. If you do this with all the 4 vertices you will get 4 3 fold. 
in the cube case it is diagonal body diagonal and you know that there are four body diagonals. So, this is a is giving some indication of the relation between them that apparently they share the symmetry and the angle interestingly if you find the angle between the three folds of tetrahedron and the three folds of the cube they are exactly the same. The angle is the well known tetrahedral angle 109.5. So, in the cube also it is 109.5 in the tetrahedron also it is 109.5 the angle between the body diagonals or angle between three folds. So, one way to explore that relationship is that cube has eight corners, tetrahedron has four corners. If you select four corners properly, if you select four corners of the cube, you get a tetrahedron. So, let me show that to you. So, suppose I start selecting, I start from this corner, I select a diagonally opposite corner on this on a given face. So, on the top face, I take two corners which are diagonally opposite. I go to the bottom face and I select the opposite diagonal and ends of the opposite diagonal faces. Now, I have four corners and these four corners define an exact tetrahedron, a regular tetrahedron. So, if you connect them, this is a tetrahedron. You can see clearly that all edges are equal because all are face diagonal of the original cube. So, if the original cube had an edge length a, all these are having an edge length root 2 a, which is one of the requirement of a regular tetrahedron. Also, you can see that the faces since they are made up of are triangles and they are made up of sides which are equal. So, all faces are equilateral triangle, all the angles are 60 degree exactly again as required for a regular tetrahedron. So, it is uh, in this way a cube can be embedded sorry a tetrahedron can be embedded in a cube and this is an interesting way to do any coordinate geometry of tetrahedron if you want to do because the cube provides a nice coordinate system. So, you can write for example, you can write the coordinates of all four vertices in a very simple way with respect to the axes of the cube. So, you can find all distances, angle, volume, whatever of a tetrahedron using this cube as a reference. But what is interesting from our point of view at the moment, the symmetry point of view, we already saw that the threefold axes were matching. So, threefold of the cube was parallel to the threefold of the tetrahedron, and here you can see that because if you join any vertex, so if I join if I join this vertex to the opposite face centroid. So, this is the centroid of the opposite face, this is one of the corners and if I join it to 
you can see that on extension that is also the body diagonal of the cube. So, it is a three fold for tetrahedron as well as three fold for the cube. Of course, in the cube case it is three fold plus center of inversion which makes it three bar. So, in the cube case it is three plus center of inversion. So, it is three bar in the tetrahedron case it is just the three fold axis because tetrahedron is not centro symmetric mm, tetrahedron does not have a center center of inversion. So, that is one axis, but the other axis which we are interested in is what was the four fold axis of the cube. So, let us look at the four fold axis of the cube which was joining the two face centers two opposite face centers. So, this was the four fold axis of the cube. what is it for the tetrahedron? What symmetry it is of the tetrahedron? Cube it was four fold because you can rotate any cube corner by 90 degree you get another corner and 90 degree another corner. So, you can rotate by 90 degree about this green axis and the cube will come into self coincidence. So, for cube this was a four fold axis. For tetrahedron what it is? tetrahedron since this if, if this corner is there the neighboring corner is not there. So, a 90 degree rotation will not bring it into self coincidence you have to rotate all the way by 180 degree. So, for tetrahedron this is a two fold axis, but if you look carefully it is little bit more than two fold is little bit more than two fold. Remember what you what we did for a four bar axis how did we define a four bar axis in the last class. rotate by 90 degree and invert. So, that means, if you started with a point above the equatorial plane rotated by 90 degree you came here, but you do not put a point there you invert in the process of inversion from above the plane you go below the plane and you also change the handedness. So, blue becomes red change of handedness and a dot becomes circle which is going from above to below. If you continue this journey again, so if you rotate by 90 degree, so it travels below the plane here and then invert, so it will again surface up and again it will change handedness, so it will bring it into the original handedness and will come there. If you again rotate and then invert. So, you will get a point below there again rotate and invert you come back to the original point. So, if this was your first point and was a right handed object then this is the second point which is a left handed object is the third point which is a right handed object and this is a fourth point which is a left handed object and this axis 
this axis became a four fold roto inversion for which the symbol was we gave the graphical symbol as a square with a lens and we gave that because we said that the two fold axis you can see that if you ignore inversions then two fold also satisfies the symmetry because blue point by 180 degree rotation goes to the blue point the red circle by 180 degree rotation goes to the red circle. So, there is a two fold, but there is more than two fold because red and blue points are also related. The two fold is not recognizing that symmetry, two fold is only relating blue to blue and red to red. So, even if there was no relation between red and blue, there will be a two fold. But in this particular case, the red and blue are also related because you can go from this 1 r to 2 l from the blue 1 r to red 2 l by rotation and inversion. So, now seeing this, what do you conclude about this tetrahedron twofold? Yeah. Two blue points above, two blue points above, two red circles below, just like in your stereogram. Can you see that? So, there are two points here, four as a four vertices of a tetrahedron. So, two vertices on top, two vertices below exactly at 90 degree turned 90 degree and shifted below. So, two points are here, two points are there. So, that is what is giving you the tetrahedral geometry, which is what is making this axis not just a two fold, but it is a four bar axis. So, we will draw a square round it to recognize that so yeah, so last time we gave you an example of for four bar i gave an example while i was leaving the class that tennis ball but i later on when i thought that a better example from crystallography or geometry point of view is this tetrahedron so, what you usually think as a two fold axis of the tetrahedron is actually a four bar axis of tetrahedron. So, it is in a sense a realistic example of four, four bar axis which you are very familiar with because tetrahedron you are very familiar with and I hope all of you have a model of tetrahedron with you to go back and look at.